Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Here we're going to look at a seemingly innocuous way to solve a linear non-homogeneous differential equation, but notice some problems that run into this solution method when we look at particular forcing functions. So in particular, let's suppose that we have an infinite differentiable function f and then consider the differential equation given by y prime plus y equals f of x. And so there's like a homogeneous part and a particular part to this differential equation. We'll not really worry about the homogeneous part because most of the stuff that we're looking at here that is of interest has to do with the particular part of the solution to this differential equation. Okay, so let's maybe jump into this seemingly very nice solution method. And we'll do that by looking at the following claim. So if we have yp equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times the nth derivative of f, then yp prime plus yp equals f of x. So in other words, this sum is in fact a solution to this differential equation, and it's one of the particular solutions. Okay, so let's maybe look very quickly at a proof of this, but I'll put proof in quotes because as we'll see later, there's a couple problems with this proof. But that being said, all the problems with this proof, if you look past them, will give us some kind of like interesting interpretations of infinite sums. Anyway, so let's get to the proof here. So if yp is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n and then the nth derivative of f, then that means that in fact yp prime is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n and then we have the n plus first derivative of f. Okay. Now what we'll do is take the zeroth term out of yp. So notice that the zeroth term is just the zeroth derivative or the function itself. And then if we pick up at the first term, notice that the first term will be negative. Let's take that minus sign out and then we'll have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 and then the nth derivative of x. Or maybe we'll write this as n minus 1. n plus 1 and n minus 1 have the same parity, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, and then we'll notice that if we re-index this sum by sending n to n plus 1, then that gives us f of x minus the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n, and then the n plus first derivative of x. But now, adding this expression right here for yp prime, along with this expression here for yp, we see that we immediately achieve this thing right here. So in other words, we have a particular solution for this linear non-homogeneous differential equation of yp, which is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n, and then the nth derivative of f of x. Now, before we look at some examples where this gets us into some sketchy scenarios, I'd like to look at an example where this definitely works out all right. So for our first example where everything is okay, we'll consider the forcing function f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 4. But now let's notice that we can easily take the derivatives of this. So f prime will be 2x minus 3 f double prime will be 2, and then f triple prime and higher will be 0. And the important thing here is that f triple prime and higher is 0, which means that when we look at this particular solution defined by this infinite sum, in fact, it collapses to a finite sum. So we have f of x plus 
So we have f of x minus f prime of x plus f double prime of x. So let's see that. So here we have yp is f of x minus f prime plus f double prime. So let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have x squared from this and then minus 5x because we've got minus 3x minus another 2x and then 4 minus negative 3 that's 7 and then plus 2 that is 9. So there's our particular solution x squared minus 5x plus 9. And you can plug this back into the original equation or the original differential equation by, for instance, looking at yp prime and getting 2x minus 5 and then adding yp prime plus yp and seeing that we get x squared minus 3x plus 4, which was our original forcing function. So everything works out here. Okay, so now let's look at a couple of examples where these calculations become a bit sketchy. So our next example where things start to get sketchy will be when the forcing function is this exponential function e to the x. So let's calculate our yp prime given this fact that we've got this forcing function what f of x equals e to the x, which means the nth derivative is also always equal to e to the x, just by kind of the derivative rules of our nice exponential function. Okay, so that tells us our particular solution, yp, will be e to the x minus e to the x plus e to the x minus e to the x plus e to the x, and so on and so forth. Now, if we were to factor a e to the x out of that, we would end up with 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, so on and so forth, e to the x, or in other words, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times e to the x. And that's directly from this kind of calculation that we did before. But of course, what meaning could we put to this infinite series? Notice that it fails the test for divergence. The terms don't go to zero, so this definitely does diverge. That being said, the differential equation y prime plus y equals e to the x has a solution which can be calculated fairly easily using variation of parameters. And so let's run through that solution real quick. So here you would guess a solution form of yp equals a times e to the x, where we have to figure out that a. I think I said variation of parameters. I meant undetermined coefficients. Notice in this case, yp prime is equal to a e to the x as well. Plugging that into our differential equation gives us 2a e to the x equals e to the x, or in other words, a equals one half. But that's where our pro... And so we definitely have a solution. We definitely have this solution given by our undetermined coefficients strategy, which is yp equals one half e to the x. But now equating the solutions that we got using these two solution methods, give us something which is a little bit peculiar. In fact, what we get is the equation one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one, and so on and so forth equals one half. And I'll put this in big quotes because of course this doesn't make a ton of sense, but one thing that is interesting is that there are summation techniques for divergent series such as this one underlined in blue that would give us this same result down here that we have achieved using this differential equation. Okay, so now let's look at another example. So for our last example, we're really moving over the line of reasonability. Let's consider the forcing function f of x equals x times e to the x. So again, we could use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve this differential equation, and we will do that at the end, but let's see what we get for our series solution. So let's first note that f prime by the product rule will be x e to the x plus e to the x. And then f double prime by the product rule 
x e to the x plus 2 e to the x. So this x e to the x will split into an x e to the x plus e to the x by taking the derivative, and then we've got this e to the x will combine with the other one. Anyway, now I think you can probably see where we're going. The nth derivative here will be x e to the x plus n times e to the x. Okay, so keeping this in mind, our particular solution given this kind of setup over here will be the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of negative one to the n, and then we have the nth derivative of f, but the nth derivative of f is this right here. So we have x e to the x plus n e to the x. Now let's factor some things out here. That gives us x e to the x times the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of negative one to the n. So earlier we determined that that should be equal to a half. Let's see if that's equal to a half in this case as well. And then we have plus e to the x times this alternating sum, n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n times n. Okay, so that's what we get here. Let's expand each of these so we can kind of see what they look like. So this one is one minus one plus one minus one dot dot dot. And then this one right here is even weirder. It is, let's see, negative one plus two minus three plus four minus five dot dot dot. So it's this alternating sum of all natural numbers. Okay, so now let's see what we get using the method of undetermined coefficients. So that means we would guess the following solution. So yp would be equal to a e to the x plus bx e to the x. So that means our yp prime would be, let's see, a plus b times e to the x plus b times x e to the x, where I use the product rule there. But now adding these together, we get yp prime plus yp is equal to, let's see, we have 2a plus b times e to the x plus 2b times x e to the x. Okay, now keeping in mind that must be equal to x e to the x, because that's our differential equation here, f of x is playing the role of our forcing function. So now let's notice that equating coefficients on both sides gives us a system of equations. First off, 2b equals one from equating these two guys, and then from equating this with zero, because we have zero right here, um, we'll have 2a plus b equals zero. Okay, but now if 2b equals one, that means b equals one half. And then plugging that into here, we'll get a equals negative one quarter. But now putting that in terms of what we have up here, we have this infinite alternating sum equals one half, which is like what we had before. And then this infinite alternating sum is equal to minus one quarter, which doesn't make a lot of sense from a convergence point of view, but it does give us the same result as a regularization of the alternating Riemann zeta function, which has been calculated in other videos, not any of mine, but in some other videos. And what I think is really interesting here is that this like differential equations approach, which seeks out just to put, um, a number to the value of these divergent series gives us the same sort of solution that you might see using other methods. So, so before we end the video, I'll leave you with a little bit of a homework exercise. So as a nice follow-up to what we saw in this video, this might be a nice problem to try. And that is, what do we get if we apply this method to the differential equation y prime plus y equals e to the minus two x? What I mean by what do we get, I mean, build a series using this method, that's a solution to this differential equation, but then use a more standard technique like that of undetermined coefficients to find another solution and then compare 
the convergence rule that you have found for that divergent series in terms of other ways of summing that divergent series and see if you get the same answer. Okay, that's a good place to stop. If you would like to get guided, hands-on practice solving problems like the ones seen on this channel and much more, make sure to check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant has wonderful interactive math, science, and computer science courses at all levels. Did you like the differential equations type problems that we did in this video? Well, you're in luck. Brilliant has two differential equations courses if you want to learn more about this subject. All of the courses at Brilliant.org are excellently designed to help you build an intuitive, full understanding of the material. What are you waiting for? To get started for free, visit Brilliant.org slash Michael Penn or click the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And once again, I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring today's video.